ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸರಸ್ವತ್ಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಸಮಸ್ತಜನಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ವರ ಮೂಕ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾಚಾಲ ಪಂಗು ಲಂಘಯತೆ ಗಿರಿ ಯತ್ಕೃಪಾತಮಹಂ ವಂದೇ ಪರಮಾನಂದಮಾಧವ ಪರಮಾನಂದಮಾಧವ will read the verses that we completed yesterday rupam drishyam lochanam drika tatrishyam draktu manasam drishyadhi vrittaya sakshi drike banatu drishyate neela pitastula sukshmam ಹ್ರಸ್ವ ದೀರ್ಘಾದಿ ಭೇದತ ನಾನಾವಿಧಿ ಪಶ್ಯೇತ್ ಲೋಚನಮೇಕಧ ಆಂಧ್ಯಮಾಂದ್ಯ ಪಡುತ್ವೇಷು ನೇತ್ರಧರ್ಮೇಷು ಚೈಗಥ ಸಂಕಲ್ಪೇನ್ಮನಸ್ರೋತ್ರ ತ್ವಾದೌ ಯೋಜ್ಯದಾ so the first verse is a verse of summarization but occurring at the beginning you summarize the thoughts you can either summarize it after saying everything or you can summarize telling that these all are going to be explained so you have summary in retrospect and summary in prospect so this first verse is a summary in prospect what does it say it points out to our true self how does it point out to our true self by taking the very basis of our life which is experience life is a series of experience so taking the very fundamental of life or the very foundation of life what is that experience it takes the experience and through the experience shows out shows who we are experience is the doorway to self discovery so how does it help us discover ourselves through the experience it says let's take for example one experience i see a particular form who sees it 
the form is seen who sees it the eye sees it so i becomes the seer the form is the seen rupam drishyam lochanam drak you are the seer correct the seen is the world the seer is you so at the first level of analysis the i is the seer but is not the i also seen andya mandya patutveshu is not that also seen blindness mediocrity of vision excellence in vision all these things you are able to see so the i the conditions of the i the conditions of your visual power which is i visual power is i in vedanta the faculty is i so the conditions of the faculty also you are able to cognize you are able to perceive so the i is the drishya and when you say when you experience it's not that when just seeing when you experiencing i to be seen the question is who is the seer of course it is a mind only the mind only is seeing through this thought structure sankalpayen manaha the mind has to start my eyes are now developing problem oh that's what they say at the age of 40 you require a spectacle who thinks all these things it's the mind sankalpayet manaha so mind is a seer seer of what seer of the functionality of the i e y okay then the mind also is seen see this is all our experience nothing is forced upon us vedanta the beauty is that vedanta is a explanation of our life Vedanta is not the philosophy of life. Philosophy is what you put something here and there, you concoct something and put in the head, and then you say this is philosophy. <laughs> Vedanta is just the explanation of our experience. Of course, that explanation provides also a deeper philosophy to live our life. That is secondary. Vedanta is first of all. a crystal clear appreciation of who we are and who we are is not a philosophy who i am is what i am so is not the thought also experienced mind is but a flow of thoughts thought is also experienced now who experiences experiences a thought who illumines a thought who witnesses the thought who knows the thought who cognizes the thought that is consciousness why do i say that is consciousness because that is just aware that is just aware that's why i call it consciousness what do you mean swami it is just aware drigeva what do you mean by that you see when the eyes are seeing the object the form it requires the presence of light so i can't see i can't say that eyes just to see is inherently capable of seeing it is capable of seeing on certain conditions the mind is also capable of knowing under certain conditions 
the eye should function properly the ear should hear properly the nose should smell properly then the mind is able to know it correctly otherwise the mind can know it wrongly also but there is no question of sakshi knowing it correctly or wrongly there is no question of something assisting that consciousness to know it just knows it is self sufficient unto itself in the experience of knowledge what did i say it is self sufficient unto itself in the experience of knowledge and that's why i say it is consciousness it just knows and the beauty of it is that it just knows yes but because it is consciousness it is also conscious self conscious in a nice way self conscious self luminous self effulgent self illumining luminous now this is also known but this is known under so many conditions mind is required eye is required light is required then this is known but i know the thought how any light is required no it knows self sufficiently that's what i mean by self sufficiently it is knowing and therefore it is of the nature of knowledge when when i say it is of the nature of knowledge it is not the nature of consciousness what i mean it's inherently capable that's why we call that alone consciousness bodha swarupa that kind of bodha swarupa cannot be posited for the senses for the eye it is bodha it knows but conditions are required conditions apply as they say what condition light is required i should not have any problem like cataract and all consciousness we cannot say for a few moments it had a blinding effect of cataract you can't say sometimes you know what happens when you are in the dark place and then suddenly you go out then what there's such a blinding light you see we call light as blinding very interesting light is always revealing but we call light blinding can we say consciousness got blinded for a moment because of extreme light is in the place you know i went to sahara desert and i lost my consciousness no it's not possible so this is what we mean by consciousness so two things are there in consciousness one it requires no assistance that's point number 1 point number 2 because it is consciousness it is conscious of itself there are two things we have to keep in mind so sakshi drigeva it sees drigeva it sees alone what we it is seer ultimate it is seer ultimate means what it sees without any assistance it is seer ultimate means what it never becomes the seen that's ultimate drigeva but i should need the sakshi but but how do i know natu drishyate it is never the seen but still it is no na tu drishyate aren't we aware of ourselves how do we how do we how are we aware of ourselves with the help of light if light goes out all light goes off also you will know yourself is it not 
are you aware of with the mind help of the mind no with or without the mind you know the presence or absence of the mind when the mind is there you know the presence of the mind when the mind is not there you know the absence of the mind to know the absence of the mind mind is not required if mind is required to know the absence of the mind how can you say you know the absence of the mind requiring nothing by itself it is aware of presence of abs- or absence of the objects and it is ever aware of its own self presence it is ever aware of its own existence okay so in this first verse bringing in all the important aspects of the self the the seer and the seen shankaracharya ji or the author let me put the author proceeds forward okay and through all these things the three laws of dikdrishya vivek also came about is it not what is law number 1 the seer and the seen are different law number 2 the seen is outside the seer is inner so when you go to the ultimate innermost then you have come to the truest seer because the seen is outside the seer is inside so i is a seer level 1 mind is a seer inner level 2 consciousness is a seer last so when you go to the innermost then you come to the truest seer so second law the seen is outside the seer is inside inner and what is the third one the seen is many the seer is one and uniform of forms are many i is one i is one and uniform why is one and uniform means what when the forms change the i does not change to see the change the seer must be changeless the seer must be changeless and that's how in the train and all no sometimes when two trains are going you do not know what is happening you are left confused is it going or it is and suddenly you look this side and then what you see you see the the tree the trees are all moving ah then ah, and then suddenly you take few minutes ah, yes this is moving or that is moving this is both are moving i think so both are moving ah yes both are moving. Ah. why the seer needs to be stationary to perceive the change in the scene all right the scene the scene is many or are many what should i the scene is many or are many any the seer are many the seer is one and uniform okay so after explaining now what all what all see these points and all he explained how first he took the i and then he spoke about the changing forms then he took the then he took the mind as a seer and then showed that the changes are there in the i now coming to the consciousness and the mind the explanation now so now rupam drishyam lochanam drik over explanation second verse tad drishyam driktu manasam explanation over in third verse now the next line drishyaha divrutaya sakshi drigeva first verse that is being explained the first verse you see first verse you see that line first verse second line you see drishyaha divrutaya divrutaya the thoughts of the antakarana the thoughts of the mind are drishyaha are the seeing and who is seeing then sakshi 
Sakshi, the witness, sees. Sakshi Drigeva. Okay? Now, let us read the verse 4. Kama Sangalpa Sandeha Kama Sangalpa Sandeha Shraddha Shraddhe Dhriti Tare Shraddha Shraddhe Dhriti Tare Hridhir Bhiritteva Madin Bhasayat Yegadhachitihi Kama Sangal Pasandehao Sraddha Sadhe Dhriti Tare Hridhir Bhiritteva Madin Bhasayat Yegadhachitihi You see that there is an enumeration. Can you see? Kama, Sankalpa, Sandeha. This is an enumeration. These are the various kinds of thoughts that we have. Kama. Can you yourself see whether you can track out the enumeration? What all is there? List. Kama, Sankalpa, Sandeha, Shraddha, Ashraddha. Good. Dhriti. What is after Dhriti coming? Itara. Itara means other than. So, Dhriti means then other than Dhriti, meaning the opposite of Dhriti. See? Next, what is the next one? Hri hi. Next, di hi. Then, bi hi. Nice, no? Hri hi, di hi, bi hi. Ityeva madin. So, there is no end to the enumeration. Ityeva madin. Many kinds of thoughts. When knowing the functionality of the eye, you can consider the mind to be one and uniform. But the mind itself is how? Many unvaried as various thoughts. So that is what is said here. Kama. Kama is desire. Sankalpa. Sankalpa? Resolve. Sandeha, doubt. So you have resolve and then that becomes doubt. You see how it's changing. Then Shraddha, Shraddha is faith. Ashraddha, absence of faith. Dhriti, Dhriti is fortitude, persistence. Adhriti, lack of that. Hrihi, he, he is being shy. Sometimes we are shy about, you know. Not very rarely, not sometimes. So, he is being shy. Dihi. Dihi is what? Dihi is a thought about something. Thought about something. A thought of this kerchief. This is also a thought. Dihi. Or a thought of something you see. Dihi. Bihi. Bihi. Fear. Ityeva madin. Ityeva madin. Innumerable kinds of thoughts. In the Aitreya Upanishad, again you have a list. Anybody has studied Aitreya Upanishad? You have a list. Samjnanam, Agnanam, Vijnanam, Pragnanam, Medha, Drishtihi, Dhritihi, Matihi, Manisha, Jutihi, Smritihi, Sankalpaha, Kratuhu, Asuhu, Kamaha, Vashaha. Because there is no end. I am not going to translate all these things. You can see for yourself. I three open. It is a beautiful library. You can go and see if you don't. All the book is also available. You can see. All these varieties of thoughts. So, Kamaha, Sankalpaha, Sandeha, Shraddha, Ashraddha, Dhriti, then Adhriti, Hrihi, Dihi, Bihi. Why Shankaracharya is telling it this order? Or why is he using these words? Those who study the Upanishads, 
would be aware that this is a statement direct from the Bhradaranyika Upanishad. See, Prakarana Granthas, Prakarana Grantha, this is a Prakarana Grantha. Prakarana Grantha, elementary text, general translation you can give. Elementary text is supposed to give the essential truths of the basic original text. I don't know, when you were students, I don't know whether you used something called as notes. Have you? What, what notes? There is a book which is called as notes. I remember. Tamil, you know, my mother tongue Tamil. So there used to be Konar uh, Urai. Guide. Ha, guide. Have you used those books? Huh? And the parents, you know, good teachers and all would say, don't use guide, study the original. And the teacher also goes to the... <laughs> because very nice no, question, answer. Otherwise the whole thing goes like a lesson. We do not know what is the question, what is the answer. Is it not? So even though everybody tells, read the original, guides are written by expert teachers, write guides. Right? So, Prakata Granthas are like those guides. And what should be there in the guide? The guide, the book, in the, the writing in the guide, the teacher should not write something else which is not there in the main thing. The main works are the Prasthanatraya. Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Sutra. So, from that, the expert teachers, they take and write for brilliant students. So that we understand it easily. That's how you find Shankaracharya quoting exactly the Bharadaranya Upanishad. Is there somebody who has not heard that there is an Upanishad by name Bharadaranyaka? Is there somebody who is not here who know, who does is sorry, is there somebody here who does not know that there is an Upanishad by name Bharadaranyaka Upanishad? Yes, it is time you know now. <laughs> Why? Whatever quotation you have not heard, they are all coming from Bradarnya Corporation. <laughs> in a Purana quotation, I am just giving you some, it is not directly related. In a Purana, if you find a quotation, when you are right, when you are studying and you find a quotation, and you do not know where it is, you can forget about everything and then say Skanda Purana. Like that, we find the Upanishad quotation you do not know. You say, Bradaranyaka Upanishad. <laughs> so huge Upanishad, brilliant. It's absolutely beautiful, but it's a little large. Okay? So, all the, this quotation directly from Bradaranyaka. Okay, that quotation may be directly from Bradaranyaka. How does it matter to me? The point is, all these ityeva madin basayati chitihi consciousness illumines basayati chitihi consciousness illumines now consciousness illumines means what forms known by the i i known by the mind mind known by the consciousness now you watch the word here. Ekada. Again it is coming. In every verse, Ekada will come. Ekada means what? Uniform. It is one and uniform. That is Ekada. That's how you have the third law. Abdhridrishya Veka. What is that? The seen are many the seer is one and uniform. It is one. The many is seen by one. Number one. And second, the one to get that appellation or nomenclature of being the seer, it has to be uniform. It can't change according to the seen. Okay? It's clear. I don't have to explain any further. But one thing you should note now, the word Sakshi is now replaced by Chithi. Did you notice that? Samji, I did not notice where the word Sakshi came. 
where did the word sakshi come first verse what is the first verse rupam drishyam lochanam drak tad drishyam drishyadi vrittaya sakshi a drishyadi vrittaya sakshi drge vanatu drishyate tad sakshi what is the nature of that sakshi chitihi consciousness so when you say sakshi you are saying it sees without any assistance sakshat ikshate iti sakshi and to see without any assistance without any support without any requirement of any further paraphernalia around it to support the experience of knowledge it has to be of the nature of consciousness no support no assistant still it knows that means what should be the power of knowledge you see eyes we say no but requires light it's a weak means of knowledge yes it knows but it's not strong enough to know by itself it's weak whereas sakshi sakshatikshate no assistant by itself it sees no light required no eyes required no mind required i can't say about this eyes eyes required mind to see i can't say about the mind also because mind also requires the eye to see they are dependent on each other and of course mind cannot see by itself we'll be studying little later also that will come in this way if it is independently capable of knowing wow what a power of knowledge it is not just knowledge it is a epitome of knowledge it is not just knowing it is a mass of knowledge i say it 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 the discovery is for the self i thought i am the i but the i also is seen by the mind i thought i was the mind but the mind also because i am the seer you see when i see the world of objects forms name forms colors shapes etc sounds etc i am the knower then i thought i am the knower means this i and this body and the senses everything is knower no but the sense itself is known by the mind oh therefore i am the mind mind is knowing i am the seer therefore mind is a seer therefore i am the mind no but the mind also is seen i am the seer is it not and what sees who sees the mind that which sees independently without any assistance that sakshi it's definitely a mass of knowledge consciousness chitihi so you see silent movement first sakshi was used now what is the nature of sakshi it is chitihi consciousness all right okay so now we have finished the explanation of the first verse second line drishyaha divrittayah sakshi dihe drgeva the thoughts are seen the knower is the witness consciousness and what is the next portion of the verse natu drishyate it is never the seen so that is explained little more it is never the seen means what it is never the seen means how it is seen i want to know we know ourselves is it not we know ourselves very interestingly i know this plate in front of me i know this but in knowing this i objectify this knowing always requires objectification knowing always requires objectification but i know the sakshi i know myself 
But in knowing myself, do I put myself in front of me and know? Everywhere knowing requires objectification. I can know, I cannot know something if I cannot see it in front of me. That's how when we are, uh, you know, suppose when we see a painting and all, no? an art, art piece, we go too close, you can't see. Then the person there tells you, sir, can you go a little, little back, sir? Can you maintain a little distance and from there see? And then you go. And then you say, so beautiful. Knowing requires objectification. Also, when you're too close with somebody, huh? you, can you can you just go little, 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 and then or you take back to look at the person. Knowing requires objectification. Unless something is objectified, you can't know it well. But you are knowing yourself. We are all self-aware. How are we knowing? This is the only instance in the entire realm of, I'll use a philosophical word, okay? This is the only instance in the entire realm of epistemology. Wherein what you know is not objectified. What did you say, Swamiji? This is the only instance in the entire realm of epistemology. Epistemology in the realm of knowledge. Pramana Prameya. Those who know some Sanskrit, Pramana Prameya Vyavahara. This is the only instance where you know something without objectifying. If you want to say, this is the only instance where we know something not by objectification, but by subjectification. There is no word in English. In dictionary, you will not find the word subjectification. But philosophy demands these expressions. Without objectifying, how do you know? So when you say, Natu drishyate, Sakshi drigeva, Sakshi is the seer alone, is never the seen. But you have to answer this question, but how do I know myself then? So how do I know myself? This is taken up in the next verse, verse number 5. And at the same time, this also explains what do you mean by uniform? We say one and uniform, is it not? Without changing. We say without changing. What do you mean without changing? Explain to me how, what do you mean by uniform? One I understand, it's one. But what do you mean uniform? Number one. And second, you say Sakshi is not known. But I know myself. Explain how. These two are taken up. Verse number five. No de di nasta me tisha. No de di nasta me Soyam vibhatya dhanyani Vibhatya dhanyani Bhasaye sadhanam vina No de di nasta metesha Navridhim yadi nakshayam Soyam vibhatya dhanyani Bhasayet sadhanam vina. No, no deti. No deti. Na udeti. It does not rise. Na astam yeti. Can you see those words? No deti. Na udeti. It does not rise. Na astam yeti. It does not set. Meaning, it's neither born nor it dies. It neither has a beginning nor it has got a death. Now the explanation is why it is called uniform. Ekadha, ekarupena. No deti, it does not rise. Na astammeti, it does not end. Which yasha, yasha, this, 
this what this consciousness what we spoke as sakshi this neither has got a birth nor has got a death na vriddhim yati na vriddhim yati it does not grow nakshayam yati na does it decay you the consciousness the sakshi it is uniform it has no change why none of these things are there for this consciousness objects form thoughts everything will have a birth and death these what you find here birth death vriddhi growth kshaya dk these are representative of the six modifications some of you must go, those who are straight tattva bodha and all will know this what are the six modifications jayate asti vardate viparinamate apakshiyate vinashyate iti shadvikar these are the six modifications i'll give the translation also first first the sanskrit one what are the what are the jayate asti vardate viparinamate apakshiyate vinashyate six samji translation please jayate born jayate it's born but the moment it is born it doesn't disappear it stays asti that is the second one this is a famous line from the nirupta of yaska nirupta is vedic etymology so this yaska very great maybe 2000 2500 or 3000 years back yaska has written a beautiful book on etymology of vedic words there he discusses what are the six modifications of all objects and beings and there he mentions this and then it has come the tradition in so many places tattva bodha you find even brahma sutra it is taken up so what are the six first born is born so birth is the first one after birth if something you know there is a after birth there is a time when it just is the child is born and child is and then what grows jayate asti then vardate grows jayate asti vardate and then after it grows after it attains its maturity then what happens staying in that maturity there occur some changes the stomach comes forward <laughs> something happens is it not something happens the fellow was growing perfectly suddenly what happened here hey you put on weight i didn't put on weight weight put on viparini <laughs> mate some modification some change so birth first modification second it exists then third it doesn't just exist like that it grows and after growing what happens it modifies viparinamate then afterwards what happens then it's time slowly it starts decaying we all know then finally what is the sixth modification sixth modification it perishes so these are the six modifications all these six modifications are absent in this consciousness न उदेती न अस्तमेती इट इज नॉट बॉर्न इट डज नॉट डाई सो फर्स्ट एंड लास्ट इज गॉन ओके जायते इज गॉन 
ವಿನಶ್ಯತಿ ಇಸ್ ಗಾನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಗಾನ್ ನ ವೃದ್ಧಿಂ ಯಾತಿ ನ ವೃದ್ಧಿಂ ಯಾತಿ ಇಟ್ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಗ್ರೋ ನ ಕ್ಷಯಂ ಇಟ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿ ಕೆ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ನೌ ಟೂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮಿಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಅಸ್ತಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಮಿಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಮಾಡಿಫೈಸ್ ವಿಪರಿಣಾಮತೆ ಇಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ವೇರ್ ಬೈ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಇಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಆ್ಯಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಉಪಲಕ್ಷಣ ಉಪಲಕ್ಷಣ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆಟ್ ದ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಬೈ ದೀಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡೆಡ್ body grew mind also grew but you the witness the illumining factor the consciousness of the body remained as it is thoughts rise right thoughts dance for a for a minuscule of time and thoughts cease you watch the whole dance so all birth all growth all death is for the rest you remain ever the same the best all right so no deti na astameti ನ ವೃದ್ಧಿ ವ್ಯಾತಿ ನ ಕ್ಷಯ ನೋ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ಥಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯು ವ್ಯಾರ್ ದೇರ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಥಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯು ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ಥಾಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಥಾಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಚೇಂಜ್ ವಿನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಅರೋಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ of all thoughts i have seen myself that's not possible one thought is there then you are there then you thought ends you also end now next thought comes then new you comes up then you will not be able to say i was the same person who experienced both the thoughts you are able to recall now you are growing old not recall you are able to tell why because you have seen also your youth that's what happens no usually when they say the show the photographs and all sometimes they put us in such a <laughs> can you find me out you look at the fellow grown up so tall fat and all those things and then he saying he showing his first standard second standard uh, can you find me out i can't find you out but you can find yourselves out why because you remained changeless so all changes are happening continuously at the level of the of course the world of objects of course at the level of the senses of course at the level of the mind but how is your experience of yourself you have remained always without any change ekada and that is why it is also called sakshi samjhi that is why also called sakshi first we said what is sakshi sakshat ikshate iti sakshi that which sees without any dependence that which is self sufficient unto itself to know that which does not require a medium to know any other paraphernalia to know that is called sakshi one second what is sakshi the word sakshi also means witness what is witness witness is that which doesn't change by what it knows witness is that which remains distant from the happening when you say distant from the happening means what an accident is there 
and some accident is there so many things have happened in the accident and who is the witness the witness is one who is distanced when we say distanced what we mean is one who is unaffected an unaffected knower who can who has experienced the whole thing is called witness correct in the court when they call the witness what is witness he is not part of the accident he was away from the accident so he is distanced number 1 and he does not have any connection who is unaffected and one who has seen everything not partially he has seen everything so witness has to have these three characteristics to be called witness one distant two unaffected and three has seen all so etymologically sakshi is sakshat ikshate etymologically you see etymologically but etymologically now next is what what is the word sakshi in general parlance rudi rudi r u d h i general parlance etymologically yogika yogika how the words have combined together and give a particular meaning sakshat ikshate iti sakshi this is called yogika the words combining and then giving a very specific meaning and therefore through the etymological through the yogika the etymological meaning what does the word sakshi tell you the word sakshi tells you that which is a self sufficient nova but the word sakshi in general parlance rudi means witness that's how always you will find the translation of sakshi is witness 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 is it not when you say witness what you mean you mean these three things distanced unaffected and has seen all yes sarvagnya sarva vid yasya jnanamayam tapaha sarvagnyascha you see it had come in hari mede stotra this is called as sakshi so what does the first line tell you the first line tell you tells you number 1 it is unaffected it is uniform that is why it is sakshi witness that aspect is brought out here then comes the question how do i know how do i know this my experience is i know myself how do i know i am not putting any light upon me to know myself i am not turning my eyes inside to know myself i am not making my mind to go inward to know myself i just know myself without any assistance is it not how i just know this is a unique experience of all of us it's not that the way you know me, yourself and the way i know myself is different each one of us here even though we are all different different people we all know ourselves in the same way just know ourselves how swayam vibhati swayam vibhati it is swayam by itself swayam vibhati vibhati bhati means shines bhati means shines that's all i can say bhati means shines vibhati vispashtam bhati vispashtam vispashtam clear nobody can hide it this one is there and then suddenly i bring this one in front of me then what happens i don't see the plate at all gone why it can be hidden mind can also disappear i may not see the mind 
eyes may not function well so many problems are there at the level of the object at the level of the sense at the level of the mind they can appear they can disappear all these things can happen you see astamiti it can disappear also and udeti it can rise before that it may not be there also a thought may not be there before it right thought definitely is not there before it arises and sometimes you know we have a problem also what what that what is that what that what swamiji said some word na what is that etymologically what is the sanskrit word swamiji used that you remember you remember i, I it just can't come it, it just there in my tongue it's not coming it's it, what's that what's that, what's that? Ah, you're weak. Ah, right, right, right. Thought is hidden. It's not coming. What did you have for yesterday breakfast? For a moment, it is not there. It's not there. Na udeti. You see, it can be hidden. It can disappear from your cognition. you can lose sight of it you can forget it you may vaguely remember it you may strongly remember it all those possibilities are there but with consciousness none of these options so boring <laughs> swayam vibhati it just shines swayam by itself swayam vibhati nothing is there in the world which can be given as example for this nothing in the world is there you can no swami ji don't say in this no example sun is example swami ji sun is swaprakasha yes this kerchief what you have you need light to see but sun you don't need any light to see swami ji it is self lit is it true is it true So yes, from the sun shines. Stars have their own light. Planets have borrowed light. Satellites have borrowed light. What is the definition of star that we study in our school? If you remember, what is the difference between stars and planets? Stars are self-lit. Oh, oh, oh. So what stars are self-lit? Yes, star does not, sun does not require light to see it. You don't have to put a torch light to see the sun, but you need eyes to see. A person who is visually challenged, what we say, blind person. A blind person, or can can we say blind person does not see the self? No. no challenge in the physical in the mental can prevent you from knowing yourself thank you no challenge no difficulty can arise in self cognition what a beauty you are bright you are dull it makes no difference you are learned good you are ignorant no difference you are a malayali you are kashmiri no difference you are hindu you are jew no difference what a beauty swayam vibhati wah wow. it is not dependent on whether you are a hindu or a muslim or a christian or a jew to shine swami ji the person who has studied vedanta for that the self shines more swami ji <laughs> no that person may know it but it doesn't is not more or less swayam vibhati swayam vibhati means what with no conditions attached it shines you are self sufficient unto yourself to know yourself take the opportunity to know it it depends on no other factor what a beauty swayam vibhati and then what not only that it is a mass of consciousness 
these words are all poor you know mass and then this and that they are all making the consciousness objectified you cannot use poetical words poetry has got a power to push you beyond where the prose can take you that's all poetry can do but the final experience is neither poetry nor prose yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasa sah the words recede along with the mind swayam vibhati meaning no indriya is required no mind is required no external uh, presence of something is required it self shines and being this way this consciousness atha atha means therefore why therefore because it is consciousness therefore atha atha then then means what because it is this way then atha anyani anyani all the others all the thoughts basayet it illumines sadhanam vina without any any sadhanam without any means without any instrument without any assistance it just illumines swayam vibhati self shines and thus all the thoughts also anyani basayet it illumines sadhanam vina without any assistance you can't say that about the eye it requires light you can't say it about the mind because mind also requires the presence of consciousness to do but this consciousness self illumines and illumines everything without any need for any assistance by any instrument so the first portion no deti nastameti esha na vriddhim yati nakshayam indicates ekada being unaffected and therefore it is the explanation of sakshi being witness untouched whereas the portion anyani basayet sadanam vina is a explanation of sakshi based on its etymology sakshat ikshate both are covered this is for people who already have studied something both are covered here one is the yogika another is the rudi swayam vibhati explains na drishyate it is never the seen but how do we know it it is self luminous okay swami ji so much time swami ji for this verse this is one of the most important verses of this that the shivak okay so shall we chant this verse once more together नो देति नास्तमेत्यशापिक वन ओवर अरे नो बडी इज हैपी topic one over now we go to the second topic so you must see how the topic grows okay so one thought structure is over now now we go to the second before we go to the second some introduction is required what is the introduction hmm first sakshi is consciousness whereas senses of course body body senses mind 
ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ವಾಹ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಾಟ್ ಎ ಡಿಸ್ಕವರಿ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇನ್ನಟ್ ನಾವು ದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ನಟ್ ಹೌ ಆರ್ ದೇ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ we say rupam drishyam lochanam drik so what i is knowing mind also knows through the eye and mind knows the eye also so mind is also knowing consciousness is consciousness other than consciousness everything is inert everything is inert means what it is made up of inert material therefore it is inert if you want to use the modern says modern sorry modern science uh, terminology calcium carbon phosphorus as our pooja guru they would say often calcium carbon phosphorus the material or you want to use the traditional terminology then you can say made up of pancha mahabhutas earth water fire air space all of them are inert the body is made up of inert material is it not but then the body knows what do you mean body knows somebody touches you you know the mind also is made up of subtle elements it is also made up of elements only the body and all are made up of gross elements the mind is made up of subtle elements what is the term for that sukshma okay another term for that subtle element tan matra va wow, yes all right thought did not udeti subtle elements mind is also made up of subtle elements so being made up of elements which are inherently inert how are they knowing point number 1 are you am i communicating yes. point number 2 swami ji ha huh, what who is suffering my main point you are forgetting who is suffering meaning what are you asking who is going through the ups and downs of life i want to get out of it samsara ups and downs of life samsara it is called samsara ups and downs of life where do we experience in the various states of our consciousness waking dream who is going through the waking state dream state deep sleep state and experiencing the ups and downs of life what a question you are asking you only no i want to know who is that you who is that i i want to know what is the big difficulty about it in the waking state the body and the mind goes through it in the dream state body is not there the mind goes through it in the deep sleep state the mind also dissolves so actually body mind only are going through the waking dream and deep sleep states what is so difficult some rare body is there somewhere mind is there somewhere body and mind are there together somewhere mind alone is somewhere mind alone is not there so who is going through all those things all these equipments only na body mind no no that is okay i understand my question is deeper than that okay what is your question see body is not me na mind is not me but i feel i am going through waking dream and deep sleep states who is the i which is going through all these not sakshi why sakshi is just watching all this witness but body mind are going through ha body mind are going through but body mind is not i but why do you say body mind is not i rupam drishyam lochanam trik form is seen i is the seer i is the seen mind is the see mind is the seen consciousness is the see so all these things are seen they are not me 
But consciousness, which is I, cannot go through all these things. Why? It is a witness. So consciousness cannot go through the ups and downs of life because it is a witness. Mind, intellect, body and all are going through ups and downs of life, but it is not the I. My experience is I am going through the ups and downs of life. Samsara does not fit the consciousness. Samsara does not fit the body-mind. Who has got samsara? Who has got samsara? Who has got the ups and downs of life? Don't say who has got samsara. All married people in some language. Wife is called samsara. <laughs> In Tamil, wife is called samsara. Therefore, who has got samsara? A married person will say, this is my samsara. <laughs> this is my samsara, those, this is my samsara means what? This is my wife. But Swamiji, this is a very, very bad Swamiji. <laughs> Why are they calling wife samsara? Why the wife is called samsara is not the important question to discuss now. <laughs> Therefore, I am not going to waste my time. And some other time opportunity comes, I will definitely tell you. But now, <laughs> the point is, samsara does not fit consciousness. Even though consciousness is I. Samsara does not fit body and mind. Because body and mind is not I. So, who has got samsara? Any suggestions? Any suggestions? Samji, I only go through samsara. No, okay, you only go through samsara. Samsara means ups and downs. Ups and downs means what? Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti, Avastha. Now, in this life, in this life samsara is what? Going through ups and downs in Jagrat, Swapna and Sushupti, Avastha. After this life samsara means what? Birth, another birth. Then again you start. Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti, Avastha. Samsara means Samyak Sarati Iti Samsara. Continuous movement. You cannot be in waking state always. Anybody can be in waking state always. No, Swamiji, I don't want to be Swamiji. You go to dream state. You go to deep, deep state. Samsara. Then what happens? Does it end only in waking dream and deep sleep here only? No. You go again. One more birth. Then again there also waking dream and deep sleep. This continuous movement where you are not stationary, stable anywhere is called samsara. Meaning ups and downs is called samsara. Who experiences this ups and downs? I. Who is the I? Is this I the consciousness? Witness? No. But that is only true I. But can you say body, mind experience samsara? No, because that is not the I. In fact, body you leave it here and go. Next, another body is taken. Can you say mind is experiencing samsara? Mind is also inert. Inert cannot have any actual experience. And moreover, inert cannot claim experience for itself. There has to be an I at the realm of the inert also. To claim the experience of samsara. Who is that I? That is being taken up. Okay. So now begins the second topic. How does the body mind senses become sentient? Who experiences samsara? Okay. We'll take up this in the next session.
the word samsara has got another interpretation that which is samyak sara is samsara samyak sara that which is a true essence is called samsara in grahastha ashrama in grahastha ashrama she is the true essence of your life hey samsara that is not the important point okay somehow it came about i had to tell okay shikshna o ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದೂರ್ನಾತೂರ್ನಮುದ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ